This movie covers subtopic 5.3, soil degradation and conservation under the main IBESS topic 5, soil systems and society. What is soil degradation? Soil degradation is a decline in soil condition, typically caused by the improper use or poor management of soil, usually for agricultural, industrial, or urban purposes. Here is an illustration of the extent of worldwide soil degradation. The dark red areas are indicating areas of severe soil degradation. Soil degradation is a serious environmental issue because soils are a fundamental non-renewable natural resource. Soils are the basis for all terrestrial life. Therefore, avoiding soil degradation is crucial to our well-being. Later on in this movie, I will discuss different types of soil degradation. But first, let's remind ourselves of how soil came to be in the first place. Significant idea number one for this subtopic is fertile soils require significant time to develop through the process of succession. Remember, it takes hundreds of years. You need to be able to explain the relationship between soil ecosystem succession and soil fertility. Soil ecosystems change through succession. It begins with the weathering of bedrock. The bedrock begins to break up and disintegrate into parent material, or what will become the sea horizon. Pioneer species are blown or transported in, and they're able to survive without soil. Recall that pioneer species include grasses, mosses, lichens, and other small plants. Pioneer plants attract consumers, and then the pioneer plants die, contributing an organic or hummus layer to the top of the forming soil. The A horizon, or then the hummus layer, is, is beginning to form. This cycle continues, and gradually soil is formed or improved upon to the point where other plants will grow. As weathering and translocation, recall translocation is, the, is water carrying materials up and down. As this occurs, materials are sorted and layers are formed. Eventually, the soil structure with all its horizons is formed. The more complex the soil, the more complex the plants it can support. Fertile soil contains a community of organisms that work to maintain functioning nutrient cycles and that are resistant to soil erosion. Fertile soil is complex. Fertile soil contains a community of organisms, including microorganisms, microfauna, mesofauna, and macrofauna. You do not have to know the specifics of these organisms, but I'm going to share some details on them to help you appreciate the complexity of fertile soil systems. Good and fertile soil has microorganisms, which include bacteria and fungi, and these organisms are able to decompose almost any existing natural material. Microorganisms transform organic matter into plant nutrients that are then assimilated by plants. Fertile soil also has microfauna, which includes nematodes. These live in soil water films and feed on microflora and plant roots. Sometimes the larger organisms, the nematodes, feed on insects and other larger invertebrates. These organisms are important to release nutrients immobilized by soil microorganisms. Fertile soils also include mesofauna, which includes pseudoscorpions, pictured here mites, and other small organisms. These have limited burying, burrowing ability. They generally live within the soil pores, and they feed on organic materials, microflora, microfauna, and other invertebrates. Fertile soil also includes macrofauna. These are visible to the naked eye and include vertebrates and invertebrates. You are familiar with snakes, lizards, mice, rabbits, etc. They primarily dig within the soil for food or shelter. The invertebrates, such as snails, earthworms, and arthropods, 
um, live in and feed in or upon the soil, the surface litter and their components. These are important regulators of decomposition, nutrient cycling, soil organic matter dynamics, and the pathways of water movement as a consequence of their feeding and burrowing activities. Again, you don't need to know the very specifics all of, of all of these organisms, on, but you do need to be aware of and appreciate the complexity of soil ecosystems and their contribution to soil fertility. All of these soil organisms work together to maintain functioning nutrient cycles, such as the nitrogen cycle, and soils that are resistant to erosion. To clarify, when we refer to soil fertility, we're referring to the ability of soil to sustain agricultural plant growth. Significant idea number two to this subtopic is that human activities may reduce soil fertility and increase soil erosion. In agriculture, soil erosion refers to the wearing away of a field's topsoil by natural physical forces such as water and wind or through forces associated with farming activities such as tillage. Here you see large areas of soil washed away during a storm. This type of activity is called sheet wash. Here you see gullying. Channels develop following rainfall. Over time, the gullies become deeper and deeper. And here you see wind erosion. And here is eroded land following over tillage. In agriculture, soil degradation refers to processes that take away the soil or erosion and processes that make the soil less suitable for use, often chemical pollutants. You need to be able to discuss the influences of human activities on soil fertility and soil erosion. Human activities can reduce soil fertility in, and these include deforestation, intensive grazing, urbanization and other agricultural practices, including irrigation and monoculture, and so on and so forth. Commercial industrialized food production systems generally tend to reduce soil fertility more than small scale subsistence farming methods. Almost half of the world's topsoil has been lost to erosion. Deforestation is a direct cause of the erosion happening in tropical rainforests pictured here. Once plant cover is gone, there are no roots to hold the soil in place during heavy tropical rains, which then wash away the topsoil and the nutrients necessary to regenerate future vegetation. Intensive or overgrazing degrades soil. This is a practice where too many animals graze in the same area resulting in bare patches where roots no longer hold the soil together. Rain and wind increase the bare patches and erosion occurs. Soil is removed from the area. Urbanization has dramatic impacts on soil, physical and biochemical properties and pollutant loads, all of which affect the life supporting services of the soils affected in urbanized area. Overcropping is a practice to produce a crop in excess of what is permitted or tolerated by the land, especially in an attempt to gain added profits by circumventing government regulations. This practice depletes soil nutrients and it makes the soil dry and susceptible to wind erosion or it makes it friable. This occurred in the 1930s, the Dust Bowl in which the American Midwest suffered a major period of wind erosion through the overuse of the land, an area the size of the United Kingdom. This happened from Nebraska through Texas. This whole area was affected by severe wind erosion. Total removal of crops after harvest leaves the soil open to ero erosion. It leaves no organic matter behind which then leaves the soil open to erosion. Growing crops with rows uncovered in between allows soil erosion to occur. Plowing in the direction of the slope makes 
ready-made channels for rainwater to flow, which of course leads to erosion. Excessive use of pesticides makes the soil too toxic. This is called toxification of the soil. Irrigation practices cause water to evaporate before it even reaches the crops. This results in minerals remaining at the top of the soil, which forms a hard crust and makes the land unsuitable. Monocultures, which defined in ESS, is that on a given agricultural land, only one species of crop is grown year after year. This results in the same nutrients being depleted from the soil. And of course, the soil loses its fertility. Significant idea number two, reduced soil fertility may result in soil erosion, toxification, salination, and desertification, acidification, and alkanization. Significant idea number three, soil conservation strategies exist and may be used to preserve soil fertility and reduce soil erosion. Here's an overview of soil conservation strategies. Soil conservation stra measures exist such as soil conditioners, for example, organic materials and lime, wind reduction techniques, windbreaks or shelter belts, cultivation techniques, terracing, contour plowing, strip cultivation, and avoiding the use of marginal lands. Let's go into some more detail. Soil conditioners are organic materials that are plowed back into the soil. These include straw, green manure crops, plant residues, compost. When plowed back into the soil, it improves the soil texture and supplies the soil with needed nutrients. Conservation strategies also include building wind reduction techniques. This includes wind breaks, pictured here in these two images are manufactured fencers that help shield the soils from the wind. Another option is to build shelter belts, which involve planting trees to protect crops and soil from the wind. Terracing is another conservation strategy, which reduces the steepness of slopes by cutting steps out of the slope and therefore slowing runoff, which reduces erosion and allows for the collection of rainwater and helps to filter pollutants, reducing soil pollution and degradation. Another conservation strategy is contour plowing, which is to plow along contour lines perpendicular to the slope. This also prevents erosion, but it's sometimes difficult for machinery because the machinery will tip when driving parallel to the slope. Another conservation strategy is strip cultivation. This involves cultivating a field partitioned into long, narrow strips alternated in a crop rotation system. This reduces erosion and reduces soil degradation. Another conservation strategy is to avoid the use of marginal lands or land that is unsuited for crops instead of using them for fuel. As pictured here, these images are of crops being cultivated on marginal land for the use of biofuel instead of using them in the context of overgrazing. But maybe we shouldn't use them at all and instead focusing on allowing the soil to recover. Another conservation strategy is the use of cover crops, fast growing crops which cover the soil between rows or in between harvests. Again, these reduce erosion and they help recycle the nutrients. Crop rotation is another conservation strategy and it refers to growing of crops that are different from each other in successions on a farm field in a specific period of time. This reduces soil erosion, aids in nutrient cycling, and maintains the soil structure. Other conservation strategies include better irrigation like this drip system. This reduces evaporation and salinization. You need to evaluate soil management strategies in a named commercial farming system and in a named subsistence farming system. So I'll do an example of each for you. An example is the livestock farms in Vermont, USA. The aims of this soil management is to keep soils well covered, 
no matter what they are growing and no and have no overgrazing. The pros are that the cow manure and urine feed microorganisms and replenish nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. There's high soil biodiversity and there's high moisture retention and no soil erosion. The cons are that the animals need to be rotated between pasture plots. This increases the cost, you know, of the fences and labor. Subsistence farming in Uganda. These farmers had three main aims. Minimal soil disturbance, maintaining soil cover through mulching with crop residues or planting cover crops and practicing crop rotations. A study was done, cited here, to determine the factors involved in subsistence farmers adopting soil and water conservation strategies in Uganda. The aims were to cause minimal soil disturbance. This is what they noticed. They did notice increased soil quality and increased crop yield. However, there were some cons. Education must occur to convince farmers to practice conservation techniques. The farmers needed training and tools, and there were initial costs, which in this case required farmers to use some of their savings. Here is a summary of this subtopic. This ends the movie for IBESS topic 5.3, Soil Degradation and Conservation. Under the topic of IBESS topic 5, Soil Systems and Society, the slides are created by me, Dr. Nina Markham. Image URL is placed under the image. If all images on a slide are from the same source, the source is simply placed at the bottom of the slide. Another resource for you is your IBESS textbook, whether in hardback form or online, such as Cognity. Thank you for listening.